Okay, let us uh, discuss a little bit about uh, sensors that they were going to use uh, in uh, robotics. Sensors uh, are uh, part of a wider problem, that is the problem of uh, perception. It's um, an abstract term that uh, represents or denotes quite a, a wide and abstract concept. Because uh, as engineering, we can measure a lot of stuff. Measure means, okay, I take the temperature of this room, I measure the, dis the distance from uh, the wall and so on. But if I have to put my robot in a, an environment, not necessarily structured, we, this, this class is uh, mostly related to the industrial robots, but uh, even in the industrial setting now, the, the trend is that the robot may share the workspace with the operator. So what do we, do we need is uh, to be able to do several other stuff that are quite fuzzy and difficult even uh, to define. I need to contextualize. What does it mean? Contextualize means that uh, something more than labeling. Because I can uh, label a frame and say, here there is a, a man that is running. But contextualize means, okay, it is running for that reason. And this is good or uh, this is bad and I need to intervene somehow. I need to be able to interpret the situation. My robot uh, should be able to understand somehow. Let, let me consider an uh, assistive robot to help a, a, a disabled and maybe something is uh, wrong from the from the physical aspect uh, from the, the, the um, uh, healthy aspect sorry of, of the of the human it should be able to understand it in order to avoid maybe to, to make some mistakes of course in order to ask for in for for help but to avoid to make some uh, additional issues. We should be able to anticipate uh, the human intention. If I'm working in the same workspace with an operator, I may assume that his arms are moving around in the workspace. If I consider the arms as obstacles, I basically stop moving my robot because the, the, uh, uh, the arm uh, could be very fast, the movement of the human could be very fast, and if I need to be uh, really conservative with respect to the movement of the robot, the only possibility is that I stay still. So this is not collaboration. On the other hand, if I understand that the robot is moving on the right side because it's going, that the human is going to take the bottle, I understand that this area is free and I can move here. So anticipate the intention of the operator. And then uh, implement uh, full detection. Sensors uh, may break, and this is a kind of uh, full detection. However, sensors may be perfectly working, but provide weird uh, data. For example, if I have uh, a vision sensor, and I'm in front of a, uh, a mirror in a, sorry, in a building made by glass. It changes a lot with respect to the time of the day and the daylight. So I can experience a moment in which this is totally, for example, is, is totally flashing the, the sun. The sensor is working, but let me say that this data should be uh, carefully considered, okay? Now, perception uh, is uh, very nice, is very wide and is very important for robotics. Of course, we don't have uh, the energy to do it in, in this uh, course, but we will make some example and uh, I will uh, just describe some measuring device. Uh, the 
class that most of you followed last year, Teriani Sistemi, is a really a useful background to address perception problems. And this is something that uh, uh, if you made the exam uh, or follow the, 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 the course last year, you may remember the problem of uh, estimate position orientation of uh, an underwater vehicle. Okay, this is uh, a perception problem and a problem that can be addressed with the instrument of uh, theory of the system. Now, in this example, uh, how, why it is very delicate and it's very important uh, to have good uh, instruments to implement perception and good algorithms. Here we see uh, a snapshot taken in um, an underground where the, all, all the humans there are cops arresting a person. Okay? And uh, all the violet labels are correctly identifying person, but then uh, here it says dog, and uh, here suitcase. Suitcase is another person. Uh, it's a little bit dark here, but suitcase is another person. Now, imagine if you want to put this as input to an automatic algorithm, whatever, is a robot or whatever, okay? You should really pay attention to that. In addition, let me let me just uh, provide you some uh, curiosity or, or, or some uh, funny or, 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 or even uh, dangerous aspect that may arise by resorting to automatic uh, uh, labeling devices. If you know the algorithm that is going to be implemented is very easy to fool it. It, may, it means to make it understand one thing for another. Here you see, top left you see a stop sign. Top right you see the same stop sign with a very small rubber rectangular, put it in a proper place. And the algorithm says that this is a speed limit of 45, okay? Uh, in the bottom, there are two patterns, totally meaningless for us, that are recognized as a, a penguin and, as, and as a fish by the AI. This has been done intentionally by researchers just to show the drawbacks of a specific argument. Now, some other example. Uh, top left, picture of a panda. By properly adding the mid, top middle uh, figure, that is noise, but proper noise, this is recognized as a, a gibbon. A gibbon, okay, is a monkey, this is a bear, but okay, this is a kind of error that more or less can be understood. However, here, starting from, uh, this is kind of a monkey, plus, plus means uh, every pixel is the, the sum of, of a race car, then this is recognized as a race car. And this is what we see. So we still see a monkey, but it is recognized as a, a race car. Then, stop sign. In those two different uh, orientation and position, it is uh, recognized as totally different objects. And uh, here, this is recognized, uh, this mushroom as a pretzel, and this is a this uh, spider is a man all cover. Okay. Finally, here there are a bunch of uh, abstract images that are made on purpose uh, to uh, make the, the 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 
the, uh, in this case it was a neural network based uh, algorithm fail okay and some of them can be quite uh, curious uh, this is a screwdriver okay this is strawberry some of them can be also be present uh, in uh, in industrial set, uh, setting of course some other are more or less fun but are not really of interest in a practical situation such as a volcano this is a volcano okay now the reply of people working with uh, such uh, uh, algorithms is okay it's a matter of training data your training data were not uh, appropriate or were not uh, the training set was was not large enough and so on. let's see from uh, a uh, website uh, sorry i didn't want to open it okay uh, darpa challenge is uh, uh, darpa is uh, a military uh, us institution they have a project that is defined explainable artificial intelligence because they cannot accept a, lot, a, a large part of industry cannot accept that you have a, a black box put it in, input inside and say okay this is a jeep bone this is a race car why i don't know okay and so they try to to have uh, all the benefit of intelligence artificial uh, the artificial intelligence but with the possibility to explain what's going on. So I clicked here, didn't want, but this is a, a project from uh, uh, DARPA. And now this is a, a result of, uh, of, let me, of a Google, a, a Google report. I cannot read it here, a Google report. Why self-driving cars failed in, let me say, one year of their operations. Okay, in tests and this is quite interesting because the violet uh, here is uh, perception discrepancy exactly what we say uh, and for example they they uh, some of the colleagues that works uh, with, with those um, in, in in this topic they, they usually tells us some uh, interesting uh, situations where the, 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 the autonomous per perception totally fail or it is very difficult uh, uh, they show some some pictures that are difficult even for humans to understand what's going on okay then uh, the the gray here says software problem so it's up to you that are computer science uh, students the red area is uh, unwanted maneuver by robot car actually i have to say that i don't i i'm not sure what does it mean okay the yellow is hardware failure and uh, okay let me tell you the percentage the violet is 35 percent software problem is 23 uh unwanted maneuver 16 hardware failure is 11. then uh, reckless behavior by another car or cyclist is uh, six there are situations where you can physically not avoid an accident of course okay if someone comes to you at a, at a speed that is faster than your capability to, to break, you cannot avoid the, the, the accident. Then we have uh, a 4% of weather, uh, of, uh, weather of weather condition, a 2% of incorrectly predicting behavior of others. Okay, so I, I was, uh, I, I predicted that the, the, the runner was turning right, it turned left, and I crashed on the on the runner. And then there is emergency vehicle and construction zone that are quite small. Okay, so those are the reasons why they can fail. Okay, now we are going to stay a little bit more on the on the on the low level and discuss about what kind of sensors we are going to meet in our in our uh, daily life. 
with robots. We, we classify the robot, the sensors in a proprioceptive and exteroceptive in the way if they measure something internal to the uh, robot or its relationship with the, the environment. We can measure position, velocity and torque of the joints. We can measure forces, tactile sensor are kind of forces, proximity, field, field, what whatever kind of fields, vision, or specific for the application, sound, humidity, and so on. Uh, here, I, I, I do have a, a repetition of what we saw earlier about, uh, I mean, the, 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 the use of uh, the, the terms resolution, precision, repeatability, and accuracy. What do they mean? And uh, in this case, it can be useful because we are talking about sensor. So resolution is the finest the instrument can read. Then uh, we have uh, precision, that is uh, finest plus repeatability and reliability, but sometimes Precision is also called repeatability, and accuracy is related to concept of correctness. Here, accuracy and repeatability are related one to each other. Repeatability is the capability to come back on the same place, even if it's not the correct one. If I ask to the robot, uh, to, the, to the target, I mean, to go uh, to reach a target, even if the target uh, is wrong, if I always come back in the same place, I have a good repeatability. Okay. And the accuracy is related to how far I am from the ground truth for the rear position. Okay, I may, I, I can measure the linear displacement by means of several sensors or the angular displacement. And I'll show you the encoder that is very common and used uh, on all the sensors. The encoder basically has a few LEDs on the different radius with respect to the center. And so they can read the transparent or not transparent sectors. And in this way, they read where the motor is, okay? Absolute encoder, you need to, you need to, to, to have a number of, um, of crowns, corona, <laughs> uh, you have here, you can, uh, you can um, uh, classify 16, uh, angular sectors, because you have uh, four different uh, notalizes of, of uh, but in, on the other end, the incremental encoder only, only need three. One for the zero, and then uh, two in order to also detect the direction of motion, and you just count the uh, transition from uh, transparent to opaque. Uh, we can have uh, resolvers. This is a this is a resolver, very small. This is an electric machine that we can use to to measure the velocity. Uh, then we can have a tachometer to measure the velocity. Different kind of actually on the robot uh, we do not have. Uh, joint velocity measurement. We have a joint position measurement and we obtain the velocity by uh, time difference, differentiation. Then we can measure the force. One very common and a cheap way to measure the force is the strain gauge. A strain gauge is a very, 
very cheap and very easy to see. Uh, also, you can you can ask strange gauge on on any any uh, any store of uh, electrical devices, uh, and uh, it's basically an electric uh, circuit uh, in which the resistance change depending on the applied force. Okay, and, and so we can measure the force. We can also have a torque sensor. This is an example of the joint of, let me say, the first lightweight robot, the first robot built in a very compact way to be used uh, as a cobot, as a collaborative robot. And we have the joint exploded here. The, the torque sensor, together with the uh, transmission, is everything is embedded in the joint. Okay, so here we have the torque sensor here, this one. Everything is here. Then we can mount the force moment sensor at the end effector. And this is uh, a picture with several uh, of such devices. You buy them by considering, for example, the range of forces that you want to measure, the signal-to-noise ratio, the uh, acquisition frequency, all data that uh, plays a very important role in uh, feedback theory, okay? The, 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 the frequency acquisition and so on. And you mount at the end effector. You mount this sensor at the end effector. Then you, you should notice that, for example, here, I am exchanging the force with the environment here, but my uh, force torque sensor is mounted here. And thus, I need the transformation that we saw yesterday. So this one, OK? I need the transformation of uh, that relates two different forces or branches applied on the same uh, rigid body. And actually, it means that uh, I need to identify this uh, uh, matrix. I need to calibrate. Uh, whenever I buy a sensor, the first time that I do is calibration. Calibration is an identification procedure. Okay? This rotation matrix and this displacement is something that uh, I, I need to measure before using it. Other very nice uh, sensors are optic-based, and this is uh, a scheme of such a instrument, and they are very sensitive. Then uh, we have vision sensor. Vision sensors are really cheap camera are really, really cheap. We will not go into the details here. There are some details uh, and uh, for an analogic one, OK? But I, I need to change those uh, slides. Uh, with vision sensor, we also need another, ca another calibration, another identification, because the image is characterized by the fact that you are measuring two pixels and your target is in a 3D world, so there is a, a uh, projection. And there are some parameters uh, that need to be identified. Okay, so whenever you use uh, a, a vision sensor, you need to identify those parameters. And here there are some details. Of course, we are not going to those details, but in case you need to make uh, a uh, master thesis, uh, experimental master thesis with a vision sensor, the first thing that you have to do is understand the perspective transformation and calibrate it, okay? It's not difficult, it's a pseudo inverse. As, as always, everything is a pseudo inverse. Okay, here there are some details that are very old because uh, those are uh, analogic video, like a camera, that, uh, this slide uh, is a little bit dated. I need to, to change it. OK, when, we, when you do use uh, vision, you may have uh, two different kind of uh, applications of your streaming. You can uh, uh, identify, you, 
not identify. You can uh, recognize that there is a low level vision when you need to implement uh, algorithms in order to detect, for example, the centroid of a position. If you have uh, a conveyor belt and your robot needs to pick up uh, object, you just need to make the gradient. For example, the belt is uh, black and your object is gray. You, you have a proper light structure, always the same light. You need to make a gradient to compute the centroid of your object and you can grasp it easily. Okay, this is very easy. And uh, is a kind of low level vision, for example. Then uh, you have uh, the high level vision where you want to understand what's going on. Here, for example, we have uh, a uh, operator that is labeled as cell phone. So, okay, we, and here we have the video taken by Daniele in the lab. This is uh, a real time functioning of uh, one of neural network that can be found uh, easily on the net uh, with some uh, domestic object in the, in the set. Okay. It's, uh, let me say, more or less okay, more or less, okay? This is our lab, but you can recognize our lab. But here, I just uh, snake it, uh, make a, snake, a, a snapshot, snapshotted. <laughs> here, he, he finds some skis in the in the desk of uh, of course it's not those are not skis those are maybe one or two pens something like that okay so are, are you going to put such algorithm in a, a control loop i don't know i mean i i i i, I would be really uh, careful before using it there is a lot of work to do Okay, now let's go out from the lab. I have uh, what is called GPS usually. Actually, the correct name is a Global Navigation Satellite System. GPS was the first. That's the reason why we use the word GPS. Okay. Now, in 2020, so this year, we had uh, four uh, GNSS systems working for US, Russia, Europe, and China. And then we have a two regional one in India and in Japan. The precision is uh, up to one centimeter, that is uh, amazing. However, the commercial uh, GPS. They do have uh, a uh, intentionally corrupted uh, signal, and uh, your error can arrive to one to, to seven meters. Okay, this is intention because it was developed initially for military applications. In the very beginning, the errors, uh, the error was uh, something like ten meters, and uh, the very beginning, the, GP, the GPS was not so popular and diffused before uh, I mean the, 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 the cell phones. A very cheap sensor, not, not sorry, not cheap, it's very diffused, but it's not very cheap. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it can have a certain cost. Is a, a laser range finder. Basically, there is a, a rotating, uh, a rotating head that shot laser and read the time of flight. It makes, it makes this uh, uh, something like uh, uh, 700 times uh, every 100 milliseconds. For This is the same as our lab for 270 degrees, so not for all 360. And here there is a simple use in our lab now, several years ago, we still have those uh, mobile robots, but not in use anymore. Actually, they are not broken, but quite 
old. And you can uh, appreciate here that there is a map and the laser is used uh, to, to localize, to map localize and to detect the obstacle in real time. So this is uh, done with uh, a frequency of 10 Hertz, a resolution of uh, more or less half degree. Okay. And uh, the guy that is walking uh, is Professor Arrichello, some, something like 10 years ago. Okay. More or less, this is the, the time we, before we move to the new lab. Okay. And this is the, what they do. Very, very funny. Okay. Eight years ago. Now, radar. Radar transmits radio waves in the domain of microwaves and uh, read the echo. It's good because it can pass this through the fog. It has a very poor resolution and can confuse a static environmental object with a static car. So it's very, the resolution is very, is very bad but can detect position and velocity of other vehicles. LiDAR, LiDAR is a, a laser range finder with a different name. The na and uh, the acronym st stays for light-based radar. It's very, it's very uh, efficient, uh, can work uh, in a, different uh, um, uh, you know, in white conditions. <clears throat> when I start writing the, 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 the slides with the, with the LiDAR, the cost was uh, 100,000 euro for one LiDAR. At that moment, Google car, half of the price of an experimental Google car was given by the LiDAR. <laughs> now, Prices are changing really rapidly, and uh, someone is saying is targeting LiDAR uh, to is targeting 100 euro in order to make it uh, popular and to have uh, the decrease of price given by the the increase of uh, uh, the market. Okay. Now I don't know what is the price uh, today, but is a little bit decreasing. Now, the automatic car, they do have all together because uh, none of them is perfect in all the conditions. None of them is perfect dot, but uh, can be used in all the conditions. And here, for example, we see the green here is a LiDAR, then a video camera, and then here we see some radar. Okay, together with the GNSS, sensors are a big part of the cost of this car, for example. And here there is another, another uh, uh, plot that uh, shows a little bit the difference between uh, camera, radar and LiDAR, why, uh, what they can see. Okay. Now, if you are interested or curious about uh, automat uh, autonomous car or self-driving cars, I suggest you to read the blog of this professor that is here in the, in the slide. Professor Brooks uh, is a professor at MIT that has a very interesting uh, uh, blog on, uh, let me say, robotics and uh, technology, also, I mean, uh, futurism in, in general. And it's, it's quite also uh, challenging to read it because it's technical, 
but this one on the automatic car can be uh, read easily. I do suggest you to just to have a read. Then RGBD. Actually, they really started uh, with uh, video games because the first time that they appeared, it was a console. Uh, I don't remember the name, but uh, the name. Okay, the name of the sensor was Kinect, but the name of the Xbox, the first one. But uh, this wasn't used in the robotics domain. I, 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 I clearly remember that it was not a sensor uh, easily to. I mean, I never heard any robotics lab using RGBD before that we saw directly on the market in our Kinect. This is what you got with an RGBD. Together with the pixels, also the distance. Then let, let's go under the water and see all the sensors that you mount under the water. Here, for example, you have a, a ROV. You can see that there is a sonar, an IMU, MU, I'll tell you what is it, light and camera, everything on this robot. This is an uh, autonomous, and you have much more. Here you have a USBL, is an acoustic uh, measuring device that for, to measure the distance. INES, we will see, multi beam sonar, side scat sonar, sub button profile, those are all uh, devices to accomplish the mission. Uh, okay, batteries and CD and CTD is also to accomplish uh, the mission. So, this is, for example, a DVI, a Doppler velocity uh, log that gives you the, the velocity with respect to the bottom, or if you are in open water, the relative velocity with respect to the water. Now, on the market, you have a much smaller uh, DVL available. IMU is the fusion of a compass, the angle with respect to the magnetic nord. However, locally, the uh, field, uh, magnetic field of uh, Earth, locally can be very distorted. For example, you cannot use a compass uh, within a building due to the uh, metallic structure of the building that is totally uh, distorting the magnetic field. And sometimes you cannot use it also outside because of some local distortion. Then together with a compass, you have uh, a gyros that gives you the angular velocities, accelerometer for the linear acceleration, inclinometer for pitch and roll angles. Okay, the inclinometer is based on the, on the gravity. If you use this one to obtain the position, as we know from uh, last year uh, class, you cannot have a proper position because you experience a drift in the position. Okay. Sometimes IMU is also defined as INSA, Inertial Navigation System, and they may eventually be fused with the DVL for the velocity. With the depth, the pressure is very good as a measurement of the depth under the water, but it's not good to measure the altitude in the air. Okay, because the pressure is constant under the water, but it changes with the temperature, with the clim climate condition in the air. And, and we call it barometer. And then we fuse it with all kind of other sensors that we have, and we put all together in a nice uh, slam that is, I mean, uh, more or less elaborated version of, of state estimate. So Kalman filtering, but more elaborated, more complex. Okay, this is what I wanted you to, uh, to listen about, uh, about uh, actuator sensor. It's basically a list of, uh, basically, 
a list of, uh, uh, of possible sensors that we can meet. In, of course, uh, in, a, in, in, a, in a laboratory environment, uh, we have uh, the encoder for the joint, uh, the, the joint torques. We may have the end effector um, force torque measurement. We have plenty of cameras and uh, eventually RGBD. Um, we have a uh, laser. Laser are good, except when there are uh, uh, windows or glasses or mirror. Such kind of uh, material may, may confuse the, uh, the sensors. Uh, not uh, much more than that. Now, the, the, the drone in the, in the, in the last, in, in the recent years, they are equipped with the, the drone for internal use you don't have a GPS working, uh, they are equipped with the cameras and they try to implement uh, uh, localization and mapping by resorting to the video streaming, so the cameras, because you can have a high frequency because a small drone, a quad rotor are very fast, so you need a very fast sensor in order to measure. Okay. Okay, so do you have uh, any any question? Just one moment. Okay, so. Uh, See you next Tuesday on uh, remotely, right? Ah, io sto ancora registrando.